Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Dot Science, and today I want to discuss the concept of quantum measurement in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. The question we ask today is very simple. If we want to measure a physical property of a particle, for example its position, what does quantum mechanics tell us about the possible outcomes of this measurement? Put it another way, can we predict what the position of the particle will be when we measure it? The answer to this question is by no means trivial, and it introduces the famous probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics. It is impossible to predict the outcome of a quantum measurement. All we can predict is its likelihood. This statement has profound implications, but is very often misunderstood. So in this video we'll explore it in some detail. There is a companion video that goes deeper into the mathematical subtleties of measurements in quantum mechanics, so I encourage you to check it out in the description. Let's go! In this video we discuss what happens in quantum mechanics when we measure a physical quantity. The quantity could be for example the position of a particle, or its momentum, or its energy. But to keep the discussion general we're simply going to call this physical quantity A. We know from postulate 2 of quantum mechanics that such a physical quantity is associated with a Hermitian operator A that is called an observable. To understand what it means to measure A in quantum mechanics, the key equation we need to consider is the eigenvalue equation of the operator A here. In this equation, lambda n are the eigenvalues, and u n are the eigenstates. If the names eigenvalues and eigenstates don't sound familiar to you, then you should first check the video on eigenvalues and eigenstates that you can find linked in the description, because in this video I will assume that you know what they are, and you also know how to calculate them for any operator A. As we know from the video on eigenvalues and eigenstates, postulate 3 of quantum mechanics tells us that the result of a measurement of a physical quantity is one of the eigenvalues of the associated observable. What this means is that when we want to measure property A, we first need to solve the corresponding eigenvalue equation up here, and this allows us to find all eigenvalues, which we can write as lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, and so on. Postulate 3 tells us that whatever state our system is in, when we measure A, we can only get one of these eigenvalues as the outcome of the measurement. So the operator A encodes all the possible outcomes of the measurement irrespective of what the state of the system is. The key question becomes, if we measure A in a system in state Psi, which eigenvalue will we get? Postulate 3 tells us that we will get one of the lambdas, but it doesn't tell us which one. For this we need to look at the next postulate. Postulate 4 tells us what value we get when we measure A in a system in state Psi. It tells us that we will get a specific eigenvalue lambda n, with probability P given by the absolute value squared of the bracket between the associated eigenstate un and the state psi of the system. So what does this mean? We've already discussed that for operator A we have a list of eigenvalues lambda1, lambda2, lambda3 and so on. Each of these eigenvalues corresponds to an eigenstate u1, u2, u3 and so on, and these two lists are always the same for operator A, and they are independent of the state of our system, they simply come from the eigenvalue equation of the operator. But when we measure A, we measure it in a system in a specific state Psi. What postulate 4 tells us then is the following. We will get lambda 1 with probability given by the absolute value squared of u1 Psi, we will get lambda 2 with probability given by the absolute value squared of u2 Psi, and so on. So what we actually get when we measure A depends on two things. First, what we get depends on the intrinsic properties of A, its eigenvalues and eigenstates, and second, what we get depends on the specific state Psi in which our system is. So postulate 4 introduces the famous probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics. Rather than telling us the precise outcome of a measurement, it tells us the probability associated with any given outcome. Because of this postulate, in quantum mechanics it is impossible to know the exact outcome of any given measurement before you actually make the measurement. All we can predict is the probability of getting a particular outcome. So what does it actually mean that we have a probability associated with a given measurement outcome? If we have a system in state Psi and want to measure A, it is in general impossible to predict for that one measurement what we'll get. We have to actually measure A to find out the answer. This is radically different to classical mechanics, where we can predict the outcome of a measurement even before we do it. 
Instead, what postulate 4 tells us precisely is the probability p here of a given measurement outcome. To understand what this means, imagine that rather than having one system in state psi, we have many exact copies of the system in state psi, say n copies. When we measure a for each of these systems, we can in principle get any of the possible eigenvalues as an outcome. So for example, for the first system, we may get lambda 10, for the second one, lambda 1, for the third one, lambda 99, for the fourth one, we may get lambda 10 again, and so on. Let's say that we get eigenvalue lambda n a total of pn times. Then what postulate 4 is telling us is that when the number of copies n of the system becomes very large, then the fraction of measurements that give lambda n, which is pn over n, approaches the probability p lambda n. Put another way, quantum mechanics tells us the exact rate at which we will get a particular outcome when we have an infinite number of copies of the same exact system. If we just have one copy of the system, all we can know is the probability of getting a particular outcome. The next thing I want to look at is how the state psi of the system encodes the possible outcomes of a measurement. Remember that we can always write the state psi in a complete basis of our state space, and that the eigenstates un of a Hermitian operator like A provide such a basis. That means we can write psi in the u basis like this, and these expansion coefficients c, which we call the representation of psi in the u basis, are given by the projection of psi onto the u basis states. This means that we can rewrite the probability p of measuring eigenvalue lambda n as also equal to absolute value of cn squared. So what does this mean? Imagine our system is in state psi and we want to measure property a. Then what we do is to write the state psi in the basis of eigenstates of a, and the expansion coefficients cn tell us the relative contribution of eigenstate un to state psi, which in turn tell us how likely it is to measure the associated eigenvalue lambda n. An important special case is what happens if the state psi is an eigenstate of the operator a that we're measuring, say um. This corresponds to the expansion coefficient cm equal to 1, while all other expansion coefficients vanish. In this particular case, we do know with absolute certainty what the outcome of the measurement will be. The probability of getting lambda m is the absolute value squared of cm, which is 1. So we will get lambda m with probability 1. We can describe this whole process in a more pictorial manner. Let's draw a pair of axes. On the horizontal axis we place the different eigenvalues of the operator, and here I am picking arbitrary values for them. As we've discussed, what these eigenvalues are only depends on the operator A, and it doesn't depend on the state of our system. Now let's consider our system in state Psi. We first expand the state in the basis provided by the eigenstates of the operator A using the usual expression. And the expansion coefficients are given by the bracket U Psi as always. If we now place the probability of getting a particular eigenvalue as the vertical axis, then postulate 4 up here tells us that at each eigenvalue we have a particular height given by the absolute value squared of the c coefficients. For example, for lambda 1, say we get this of height c1 squared. And similarly for the rest of eigenvalues. In this schematic I am just making up the values, but in a real situation we would get them from the state psi using this bracket. This diagram is showing what we call a probability distribution. The higher the lines, the more likely we will measure that particular eigenvalue. In view of this, what does postulate 4 teach us about measurements? It tells us precisely what the heights of these lines are. So it tells us precisely the probability distribution of the different outcomes. This means that if we have a large number n of exact copies of the system, the fraction of times that we will get any given outcome approaches this distribution as n goes to infinity but for any individual measurement, we cannot know beforehand what the outcome will be. Unlike classical physics, in the quantum world we cannot predict the precise outcome of the measurement of a physical quantity. Instead, what quantum mechanics tells us 
is the precise probability distribution of all possible outcomes of that measurement. In this video we discuss the conceptual understanding behind quantum measurements, but don't forget to check the companion video that looks in more detail at the mathematical subtleties associated with them. And as always, if you like the video, please subscribe.